My name is Ingrid Guerra Lopez. Um, I am currently at Wayne State University in Detroit and I, I teach performance improvement. Um, and then of course the consulting work that I do, I guess, takes me everywhere, um, which is one of the great pleasures of, of my work. I guess my first exposure um, to HPT was, uh, no surprise, through Roger Kaufman. Um, I was coming from a background of, of philosophy uh, and literature, and then I thought, oh, you don't see very many pondering philosophers sitting on a rock making a good living, so I said, well, psychology seems reasonable. Um, and so I was doing, you know, really good in the behavioral analysis kind of stuff, which was just so exciting to me, and it was the precision and the measurement, and it just, I, you know, I really identified with that. Um, so we had someone who came to talk in one of our um, psych courses and said, you know, we happen to have this great program here at Florida State, and so I thought, yeah, okay, I'll try it. And, you know, I, I probably went through uh, the program through a couple of courses, and then I took Roger Kaufman's Needs Assessment and Strategic Planning course. And I thought, you know, before that I had thought, yeah, ISD sounds great, and it's interesting, and it's rigorous, and it's systematic, but so what? Who cares? And then I got a chance to see Roger's work. And I thought, oh my God, this is it. You know, this is, I don't, I don't have to be a pondering philosopher. There's a way to do, you know, concrete, tangible, meaningful work all, you know, under one profession. And, and um, I asked Roger, hey, will you, you know, will you be on my committee for my master's, uh, you know, exams and, you know, that sort of thing. And he said, sure, under one condition, that you stay for your PhD. And the rest is history. So um, that was probably my, my, first impactful exposure to HBT and it's and it's really shaped who I am. Um, Roger Kaufman's work has had a fundamental uh, impact in, in my views of, of how things work in the world. Uh, it's also taught me not to open my mouth unless I can back it up with data. So you know all those things kind of have let my interest with uh, what I do right now which is very focused on performance measurement and performance evaluation and the use of relevant valid, reliable, and complete data to make decisions. And so that's, that's had a huge influence in me. Um, I started out doing uh, needs assessment work with, with uh, Kaufman, and one of the things that I noticed that people had the most trouble with was that deriving those specific indicators um, in order to, you know, to determine gaps. People have a hard time um, at least, you know, the clients that we were running into had a hard time with that position with specifically what do you measure. And so I found that, well, that's kind of what I like doing the most. And so it was just kind of a natural transition for me to be focusing on the performance measurement. Um, and then, you know, I thought, well, how much can I improve what Roger does in terms of, of assessment? And evaluation was just a natural progression to me that was just really cool and complementary to, to Roger Kaufman's work. Um, Another person who had a fundamental impact in my work was also Gary Rumler. Um, I had the good fortune of working with him at the Sonora Institute of Technology in Mexico, along with Roger Kaufman and Dale Brethauer and Bob Carlton. And, you know, I'd always talk to, to Dale and, and Gary about, you know, my work in performance measurement. And, and, and I remember there was one correction that Gary made and Again, it was one of those aha moments. And he said, well, it's not a performance measurement system. It's a performance management system. The measurement is just, you know, supporting that. And I was like, well, yeah, of course, of course. You know, it was one of those things where you, you sort of knew, but you didn't realize the, the depth and profoundness of that. And that was one of those moments that I look back in my career and just, feel like it just floored me to, you know, at a whole new different level. Um, and so, um, you know, I, of course, was um, very exposed to Gary's work as well through the work that we did at, at the Sonora Institute of Technology. And I, I would say that, I mean, what I learned from that one phrase and that one second was just, it can't be prized. Um, and yet, you know, I still have this horrible regret that he offered, you know, come out to the house and, you know, we'll talk more and we'll brainstorm and, and I never got the chance to do that and that's probably one of my, my worst regrets. I think 
gosh, I learned so much in just one sentence that he said. How much more could I have learned in a whole weekend? Um, so it kind of taught me to really take advantage um, of things like, you know, the ISPI conference um, and any exposure that I had with people in the field that I really respect. And so I've always taken the initiative to kind of, you know, be present and take advantage of interactions with those people um, and always learn something. So it's one of the great things about um, getting together in the conferences that, that uh, is really meaningful to me. In terms of an HPT uh, elevator speech, I don't so much um, have an HPT elevator speech, I guess. Um, I'm very analytical, so it's hard for me to simplify. I try, but it's hard. But in a nutshell, I just tell people that I help uh, people uh, be more effective. I just help with effectiveness. I help with um, you know, productivity, and it could be building a table, or it could be improving a decision-making process that has life-altering outcomes. Um, and so the process is the same. The, you know, the, the science of it applies. I think, again, thinking about Gary Rumler, I think um, that he used to say, you know, kind of like your body and somebody else's body has the same anatomy. Organizations have the same anatomy. And that's what I tell clients, too, in terms of the process. You know, a physician can apply the same diagnostic process or the same, you know, treatment process, no matter what the individual. And, and it's, you know, it's the same with, um, it's the same with, with organizations and with, with performance. So that's kind of how I try to explain. Um, it lasts longer than an elevator. I usually follow them out to explain the details. But, um, and so... What I'm doing right now, again, as I said before, I'm really focused on performance measurement, uh, performance evaluation. I'm getting really interested, and a lot of my work lately has been around uh, the performance measurement and management systems, um, but not traditional types of, of performance dashboards. Um, again, stemming from my influence from Roger Kaufman, it's distinguishing these indicators that we track and distinguishing between indicators of means, the things that we do, the resources that we use, um, with indicators of, of outputs and outcomes. And the idea is, is that we're able to establish you know, documented relationships between the things that we use and do with the things that we want to accomplish. Um, and so um, a lot of my work is around those two things and, and with the initial, what I think is an innovation in a lot of fields and maybe not for us, but so we have all this data, great, what do we do with it? And so a really important part of that is giving the people who are going to be making the decisions, the people who are going to be using these performance measurement and management systems, a performance improvement repertoire, right? So here's what you do with the data because it makes very little sense to spend all the resources to collect the data if it's just going to sit there. Uh, Acoff used to say that it's not the lack of data that's a problem, it's the overabundance of it, because then you have to sift through all this and then it just renders you in mobile. So, you know, allowing people to track the right data for the right reasons to answer questions that have been identified beforehand, right, and then giving them a very tangible process for using the data so that it results in measurable performance improvement. And so that's kind of, you know, at the core of, of what I do. Um, and I really wish that people would, would really understand the difference. Um, you know, one of my worst pet peeves is when people talk about evaluation. I'm going to do a survey of, you know, X, Y, and Z, and I'm going to, you know, just do interviews. And so it's, you've picked the methods, right, before you've, figured out what decisions have to be made, um, what questions you have to ask, and how does that relate to meaningful results for the organization at the various levels, as Roger would say, strategic, tactical, and operational. And then you get into sources, and then you get into data, and then you get into methods. So there's this whole foundation that we just kind of ignore, and then we, you know, we say, well, I make data-driven decisions, except your data is probably not relevant, reliable, valid, or complete. So that would be the, you know, one of, that's kind of one of the key messages that I always want to uh, leave people with. So that's it.